the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello and welcome to this week's episode of What's This Button Do? I'm your host, Dustin. Fresh off of the NAM episode from last week, we have a brand new release that wasn't even announced at NAM from our friend Charles at Silktone. Charles has come out with the follow-up to the Silktone fuzz pedal, the Silktone Overdrive Plus. Now, this is launching today and is probably one of the most exciting releases that I have seen in a long time. But I'm going to tell you, when I first heard about it, wasn't that exciting. Thought, oh, Charles is coming out with an overdrive? Cool. Like, I've got so many overdrive pedals and this market is so flooded with overdrives. It's so hard to be different and be unique and try to have something special. So I didn't know what to expect, but I knew Charles would do it right. I just wasn't sure what it was going to be like. Then I got my hands on it and wow, what he has created here goes above and beyond your typical overdrive. But I think the only way to really uh, let you know how this works is to just jump right into it, show you all the settings, and we're going to play around with it. We're going to play with it on its own with some other pedals and just let you hear what it sounds like. So join me over the pedal board. Let's mess around with this beast. All right, so for today's video, we're going to be using the Rock and Roll Relics Lightning. This has uh, the Powertron pickups in the bridge side of things. We're going to stay in that. I think that'll be the best to demo this. So let's dig into the pedal itself. Now, at first glance, this seems pretty simple. There's a few switches, a few little weird things on here. But for the most part, you're seeing a volume, a tone, and a gain knob, similar to what you would see in any other overdrive pedal out there on the market. However, this is way more than meets the eye because these three have a completely different potimeter structure that I've ever seen on a, a true gain overdrive pedal. For instance, we're going to start off and I'm going to walk you through each different knob one by one. We're going to start with the volume knob because usually when you have a pedal like this and you turn the gain all the way down and the tone all the way down, you get this muddy, quiet, maybe not even any signal at all. Sometimes you have to have the gain turned up. Watch what happens. I'm going to just show you what my clean tone is. Now I'm going to turn it on. Notice we're at about 11.30 right now. With the tone and the gain turned all the way down, that's about unity volume. When we start introducing more gain and more tone, you can take the volume down to about 9 o'clock, and that'll be more like unity gain. But the cool thing about this pedal is, is this can act as a 100% clean boost by just turning the tone and the gain down. You will not change the tone of your guitar, but watch what happens when I go up to about noon. Go down to about three o'clock. Go all the way up. And now watch it turn back off. Notice, even though my tone knobs turned all the way down, it's not making the sound muddier. It's not taking away from the treble side of things. It is just literally boosting up my signal, giving you this beautiful clean boost. So here's the first trick to the Silk Tone Overdrive Plus. It doesn't have to be an overdrive. It could just be a beautiful clean boost that truly does not impart any additional tone on your signal. But if you want it to sweeten things up a little bit, what you can do is let's peel this back to about noon and let's start introducing the tone knob now. So when we bring this up to about nine, see how much brighter that gets? Let's take it up to about noon. Take it to about three o'clock. You can hear how much more of those trouble sides is coming out and then all the way maxed out. And even though we don't have the gain turned on at all, you can hear, you can hear if I really dig in. 
You can get it to get a little bit of a breakup in there because you're pushing that treble side of things, but it's still not a true like overdrivey breakup. But let's turn the tone back down. I'm gonna take it back down to around noon and let's start introducing some gain and see what happens. So right here, let's bring gain up to about nine o'clock. Bring it up to about noon. Hear that? Listen to those harmonics. So freaking lootly killer. I love that. It's rich, it's harmonic. The gain's got grit, but we're not talking like tool level distortion or heavy metal, anything like that. It's just a good, gritty, grimy push through. And on a lead tone, let's dial that gain back just a little bit, bring our tone up a little bit like we wanted to cut through a mix. <laughs> even bring our tone back it's just got a really really nice tone to it Now, if we dial this gain up a little bit, we bring the tone up a little bit, the lead tones that you can get out of this are absolutely insane. But watch this, if I roll my volume back on my guitar. Roll it back even further. cleans up well with your guitar's volume knob, it mixes into there exceptionally, exceptionally well. Now, let's look at, take a look at something else. You notice there's two little switches here. The first one is real simple and real subtle, but it, it's really got a great functionality to it. This is actually a bass cut switch. And what you'll have, notice, I want you to listen to the heavier notes as I'm playing here. I'm gonna turn my volume back up. <laughs> Notice how that just tightens it up a little bit, makes it sound a little bit nicer, firms up that bottom end, takes away a little bit of the flub. That's really what that's there for. It's not a massive change to your tone, but it will make a difference. And especially for rhythm guitar, that's gonna be a really, really important uh, switch. Speaking of that, the clipping mode is this other one. And this is the switch where I genuinely thought I was gonna like one side and I wound up falling in love with the other side. Now both are very, very functional. Now you guys know how much I love asymmetrical clipping. What that really means is when I've got that switch turned over to the left side, as I play a note, you're going to hear a lot more fuzz and a lot more kind of clearer, drivier sounds around the edge of the notes, but it's gonna get gritty and dirty and textural. It's really, really cool, so listen. <laughs> that around the edge it almost sounds like a fuzz pedal it doesn't sound like an overdrive it takes it to that nth level when i turn on symmetrical clipping this is going to sound a little different <laughs> Hear that difference? It just smooths everything out when we go into symmetrical mode and takes a little of that edge off, a little of those little crispy, gritty, fuzzy textures off that outer edge. Now, why would you wanna do that? Because obviously asymmetrical sounds amazing. Like, Dustin, why would I wanna be on the other side? 
Well, asymmetrical clipping is great when you're playing a lead line. If you want to stand out and you want those fuzzy, gritty tones to be sitting out there. But if you're a rhythm guitar player and you're wanting to have some fuzz and some drive on your, your lick, say you're just playing a simple, a simple riff like this. Let's actually start in asymmetrical. See, when I take that down to symmetrical clipping, what I've done is I've pulled my volume back a little bit, but I've also smoothed out those edges. That's creating a floor for your lead guitarist to play over and to shine when they're using their brighter sounding uh, playing, you're going to create that level for them to play at. So I think first and foremost, that little switch right there gives a rhythm guitar player an amazing overdrive that allows them to pull back, blend into the mix when they need to. And then if you want to take a solo something, flip that bad boy on and you're good to go. So there's one other thing we haven't discussed on there and it's time to talk about what's this button do. This little button is a magic button and Charles says in the instruction manual that he's added an inductor switch into here, but he doesn't really clarify what it is. Now I've done some digging and I'm 99% sure that Charles has cut a deal with SpaceX to scrape tardigrades off of their ships when they return from space. Then he puts them inside these little inductors, shakes them up really hard to make them really mad. And it makes them turn the sound into this angry, just rough, gross textural feel. And I don't know how he does this, but seriously, it's such a killer sound you got to hear this so i'm gonna i'm gonna go back into our asymmetrical clipping and then i'm gonna let you hear this i'm gonna start in the raw mode and then we're gonna turn on strangle and i'll explain what that is <laughs> Here it just takes that gain up into a whole other realm, turns it grittier, fuzzier, thicker. Now, I like the raw mode, don't get me wrong, but here's the real magic. Let's take this into the strangle mode, because strangle mode is where you introduce that inductor that Charles added into the circuit. The raw mode is just basically boosting your signal and creating more grit, more fuzz, and more thickness there. But strangle mode is going to take it into a whole new level. So let's go into symmetrical clipping. Let's do that rhythm thing that we were doing a few seconds ago. <laughs> Now, did you see the difference there? When I was in raw, you heard those notes coming through a lot more, a lot heavier and a lot, lot brighter on their end. When I switched into strangle mode again, it pulled those notes back, kept them from ever creeping out and getting too loud in the mix, sparkling too much, but it gives you that thick, heavy sound on the back end. Now, if we take this one step further, if I crank this up, but I bring that gain back, maybe I bring the gain back to around nine o'clock and I leave it in strangle mode, watch what happens. <laughs> See, just a beautiful pad, great line that when you have a bass and a drum player mixing into that, you're going to merge together and create this amazing back line for your lead player and your singer to play and sing over. That's going to sound absolutely gorgeous. And that is the beauty of the Silk Tone Overdrive Plus. Yes, it'll allow you to do some soaring leads. Yes, it allows you to get super fuzzy if you want to. But where I think this shines the most is actually for a rhythm guitar player, this is the best overdrive to create your place in the mix and to dial it as high and sparkly as you want to, to as far back and muddy as you want to, to allow you to sit where you want to sit in the mix and not take away from the rest of your bandmates. This is the overdrive to beat all overdrives. But 
There's another little magic secret with this that I have to share with you because it was such an amazing discovery for me when I was messing around with this. I had to share it. So uh, you guys heard me playing the Star Spangled Banner in my intro. Every year, if the Chiefs make it into the Super Bowl, I always play the Star Spangled Banner right before the game goes on. Just a little bit of good luck. Um, it's just been my thing for years. Um, so... I uh, decided to record it this year, put it down. It was really, really fun. I was messing around with it and I wanted to use the silk tone. So that's the overdrive sound that you hear as I play that song. Um, but when I was doing that, I was messing around with some other fuzz pedals. And I realized that there is this magic spot. If you turn the gain all the way down. Now, a lot of times on an overdrive pedal, if you have the gain all the way down, there's no sound. That is not the case on the silk tone. The silk tone, you can completely bypass the gain, turn it all the way down, and you're still going to get a boost out of the pedal itself. What I like to do is turn the gain all the way down, leave yourself in this uh, uh, symmetrical mode, leave yourself in the bass boot mode, and keep the strangle on, keep my tone just up around one o'clock-ish, and leave my volume right around the 11 o'clock mark. Now we're gonna turn on, you'll notice my uh, little B-tronics uh, Abella fuzz over here. This is actually one we're gonna be doing a demo of, of a, in a couple weeks. It's another amazing fuzz, but I want you to hear it by itself. I'm just gonna turn on for a second just so you can kind of hear what it sounds like. It's kind of a real trebly fuzzy. <laughs> Right? Got a real nasty kind of gnarly fuzz sound. I love it. But say you want to thicken that up a little bit. Watch what happens when I also introduce the silk tone. Take it away. I take away my fuzz pedal, this is what I'm what, what I'm getting just out of the silk tone. Notice it's not crazy, it's not an amazing sound coming out of there, it's just a real simple kind of padded sound, but that little bit of a boost and that thickening agent that you're pushing into the Abella just takes it into this whole other realm and oh my gosh, it is insane. So I got excited about that, I thought, okay, this is really cool, but what happens if I run a fuzz in front of that? So now what I'm gonna do is down on my uh, board below here, I've got that uh, Dan Drive Joey Landreth bonk machine. Um, let's turn that on, I'm gonna let you hear what it sounds like by itself with nothing else in the mix. Now the bonk is one of those that is kind of muddy and darker in its own right when you're playing into it. So sometimes I like to find a way to boost that and to increase the treble. Sometimes I'll use an EQ, maybe I'll use like a King Tone Rise after it to really bring it out in the mix. But watch what happens when I do this with the Silk Tone Overdrive. <laughs> See how much more life that brings into that fuzz? It just brings it to the front of the mix, highlights it, and by playing with the tone knob a little bit and playing with your bass cut, you can take it in, take it out to adjust that you basically are giving a whole level of boost after your fuzz pedals, so you can take them to that next level and really make them stand out in the mix. That, to me, is another exciting, exciting part of this pedal because it plays well with boost and fuzz coming before it. It plays well with drives and stuff coming after it. You really can set this anywhere in the mix. I think where this shines is right in the middle. So you have some pedals that you play with before it, some pedals that you play with after it, and allow it to, to be your boost, allow it to drive you or drive some of those pedals, and also allow it to boost 
some of the pedals that came before it into this whole new realm. Now, this is also a great one if you've got a MIDI switcher or any kind of like a Bossy S8 or a gig rig, anything like that. This is a great one to kind of have on its own channel by itself so that you can change the order of the pedals and drop it in wherever you want it to be. If you want it to drive into another pedal, you can switch it around and cascade it into something or move it to the end of your chain and have it boost up other stuff behind it. That really allows it to shine. So it will work anywhere in your signal chain really, 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 really well. So what Charles has done here, it is absolutely magical. I can't find a flaw with this. The price is killer. The quality is killer. The sound is killer. I, I honestly, I get bored by overdrives. Usually when I hear a new overdrive is coming out, I'm like, all right, I could not care less. It just doesn't entice me. It doesn't, doesn't get me excited, but this truly, truly, truly gets me excited. I think it's going to be such a huge hit for him. So I'm very, 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 very excited to see where this goes in the near future. Oh my gosh, that thing is just so awesome. It, genuinely, it takes a lot for me to get excited about an overdrive pedal. I've got plenty of overdrives. Um, it, it, there are so many out there and so many variations on... You know, somebody took a inspiration from this overdrive or this overdrive and they tweaked it a little bit and made it slightly better. There's lots of that out there. This is something unique. This is something that is its own beast. And that inductor that Charles has added into uh, that second switch, just ah, absolutely magical. It's so funny. It's, it's very little that I think about rhythm guitar players when I think of overdrive pedals. I'm always thinking about, you know, pushing yourself into that lead and pushing yourself to stand out from a mix. But I think what Charles has created here is this perfect, like, I want to sit in the mix. I want to be a good rhythm guitarist overdrive that blows me out of the water. It just makes me want to sit there and play rhythm guitar all afternoon. But then if you want to kick into lead, boom, switch that switch on. And now you're into soaring lead territory. I, I We've only begun to scratch the surface on the potential of this, but I genuinely think this is going to be in the running for my uh, gear of the year this year. I'm so wowed by the sounds that I've gotten out of this in the short period of time that I've played it. I have shot this out against several of my other favorite overdrives and just the way that it cleans up and the gain that's on tap, it's absolutely blowing them out of the water. So well done, Charles. Well done, Silk Tone. It just so, so phenomenal. I'm, I'm blown away. So. Now, Next week, we are going to be back with our regularly scheduled program and going to be covering that Expandora. I just got a chance to get one of these and get this video out on release day, so we decided to put back the Expandora episode for one week. Uh, we'll be covering that next week. And then the week after that, we're going to be digging a little bit more into that new fuzz from Beatronic. So please join us if you have some time. As always, I'd love to thank my friends over at Palin Music. I know they're going to be getting these pedals in very shortly, so uh, if you're interested in getting one, please reach out to them. They'll get you one on order um like i said they're they're phenomenal um and i i think anybody will be happy with this it doesn't matter what style of music you play i think everybody's going to be able to find a, a use for this it is simply one of the best overdrives that I've ever played. Um, and if you get a chance, please hop on over to Instagram. I'm going to be posting some more content. We're going to be messing around. And for the Super Bowl, uh, we'll be uh, doing a little bit with the Star Spangled Banner and having some fun over there. So join us over there. I'm sure you're going to hear the Silk Tone on there several times this week. So we look forward to seeing you there and can't wait to see you next week. Thank you again for coming out, spending your Tuesday evenings with us. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you soon.